From Cherry Hill Publishing. Junkie Love by Joe Clifford. Read for you by Timothy McKean. Part 1. Sugar and Bleach. Chapter 1. Hepatitis Heights. We call this place Hepatitis Heights. It's a shooting gallery on top of 23rd Street, Potrero Hill, San Francisco. I guess you could say I live here. It's where I shoot my dope and crash when I'm not in somebody's trailer, under the freeway, or at the music studio off 3rd Street. The Heights is where I keep the few things I own, an extra t-shirt, toothbrush, some cartoons I've drawn. But I don't pay rent. Nobody does. It's been almost a decade since I left my small hometown in Connecticut to follow the lead of my heroes, Kerouac, Burroughs, Westerberg, the call of the rock and roll drifter. That was 1991. I was 21. Now I'm stuck here. It's 1.30 p.m., and I've switched on the TV show Cops. I have a tiny black and white television they will not take at the pawn shop, despite my numerous pleas. Hepatitis Heights is a flat with three bedrooms and a bathroom on the right, boxed in by a spacious kitchen and quaint breakfast nook at the end. The fading pastel exterior resembles many of the Victorians you find in San Francisco, except this place is filled with junkies and speed freaks. We don't allow crackheads here. Even among drug addicts, there is a hierarchy. When Catherine, my wife, and I first move in, we got dibs on the front room, the one with the big bay windows overlooking the winding hills of San Francisco and its shimmering bay. Kathy has schizophrenia. We painted the room hospital green to remind her of home, and for a while it really was home. But she's gone now. These days, people trade goods and services to sleep in the bathtub. There is no telephone or running water. We have no electricity. An extension cord hangs out my window, hooked up to the basement apartment of the guy living downstairs, an old transvestite named Henry, who lets me use his. Months old trash is piled up in our hallway because the city will not pick up your garbage if you don't pay your bill. All through the night, tweakers crawl around inside the walls, rummaging through the busted vacuum cleaner parts and gasoline-soaked rags inside cubby holes and storage spaces, searching for anything to sell. I'm still in the front room I once shared with my wife. The bay windows are now lacquered black, long velvet drapes snatched from the thrift store on Valencia and 16th, slightly stained with grease and cum, give the room its majestic, low-budget adult film feel. I'm not sure of the players in the company today. We have a rotating cast. At any given time, there can be more than 20 desperate, addicted criminals in this place. I lock my door at night, but that doesn't stop the mice from crawling through my hair. I am mostly a heroin addict at this point, having graduated from strictly meth a while ago, moving through the ranks, like snorting to the needle. But I will shoot up anything. Coke, speed, fentanyl fished from the dumpsters behind SF General. Whatever you put on the table. I like to believe I'm still more lucid than the average tweaker. Call me the one-eyed king. I found a vein in my big toe for my wake-up fix. I blew out all the big veins. All I have left are the tiny ones in my fingers and toes. And, of course, I have my cock. But they warn you about shooting up there at the needle exchange, where graphic pictures of black, necrotic tissue scare me off. I've mined a few cigarette butts from empty beer bottles in the trash, and I'm drying them out in the dirty white microwave I keep in my room. Waiting for the bell to ring, I see on TV that the cops have raided a meth lab in the garage of a house belonging to an old woman. Her adult son, apparently the cook, is being interviewed. His jaw slings low and responds unnaturally when he tries to talk, as if it's unattached from the rest of his face. This is a common speed freak phenomenon the result of constant teeth grinding, a precursor to meth mouth, which is what happens when the drug's acidity corrodes the gums and rots the teeth to little brown nubs. As I watch the man on TV struggle to speak, a piercing scream echoes throughout Hepatitis Heights, 
followed immediately by the jarring sounds of kicked in doors and shattered glass. Then comes the sirens and stomping boots, the bullhorns and shouts of police. German shepherds bound up the steps, barking angrily. An M16 aimed at my head. I'm ordered out in the hall and against the wall. The cops rouse the two smelly girls who each paid me a dollar to sleep on my floor and tell them to do the same. Sunlight streams through the open front door, bright yellow beams clogged with the dead cells of the dying, causing the other vampires to shield their eyes and hiss. The drugs I shot up navigate my bloodstream, filtering through my liver and striking pay dirt in the receptors of my brain, optic nerves tingling in a morphine dream. United States federal agents and the San Francisco police are everywhere. They're swarming the place, breaking down doors, popping up through cracks in the floorboards, sliding down shingles and swinging through windows. And this will only piss off our neighbors more. They've been trying to get us evicted for months. Out the front door, a dozen squad cars and a big black SWAT van are jacked up on the curb. Officers crouched behind, two fisting their firearms, which are pointed squarely at us. Inside, police drag tweakers from rooms and closets, out from under tables and into the hall. They don't put up much of a fight. They seem paralyzed, faces frozen, locked in the grimace of a nightmare. This is the day they pray isn't real. Methamphetamine produces intense paranoia, so addicts must convince themselves on a daily basis that the government is not stalking them with video cameras, that no one is taping their phone calls, and there are no monsters living under their bed. So you can imagine how difficult this moment is for them, this melding of fear and reality. The officers keep shouting, Get down, or get up, or up against the wall, now, asshole. And I can't tell whether it's coming from the TV or the ATF, or if it's all in my head. I'm having a tough time keeping my left arm up. I got out of SF General yesterday. I fell off my bike and broke my collarbone on my way to score, and my arm is in a sling. As soon as I got back to Hepatitis Heights, a guy I'd ripped off for 20 bucks came by and picked a fight with me, and the collarbone is separated again. The door to my room is open, and I see tourniquets, used needles, little balls of cotton, the bite-sized packets of antibiotics they hand out at the needle exchange, scattered about the floor. One of the cops sees this, too. He asks if he can search for contraband. I ask, can I say no? He says, yes, you can say no. So I say no. See, they're not after me today, nor most of my other roommates. They're after the one tweaker who lives in the back, an ex-con named Donnie who has warrants out. Most of us have warrants out, but ours are for little things like stealing paint from Home Depot or buying needles from an undercover cop in the park. Donnie's crime involved guns and shooting at police. I look down the hall and see some of the new tenants for the first time, dirty, scared, whacked out of their skulls. Everybody stinks. Nobody has shoes. And this is my life. I'm 30 years old. I don't know where my wife is. I have lesions peppering my face. My arms are riddled with abscesses. I'm six feet and one inch tall, and weigh 150 pounds. When I first became addicted to drugs shortly after arriving in San Francisco, I told myself I was just a white suburban kid playing the part of a scumbag junkie. It'll give me material for an album or a book I'll write someday. I'm not like these other people. But today, as the ATF drags Donnie away to San Bruno prison over the din of television theater, and as the rest of the Heights death sentence kids drag themselves into their respective dark corners, to inhale aluminum foil, or cook up a fix, or just beg for a twice-pounded cotton, I realize I'm not playing a part anymore. I really am a scumbag junkie, and I don't know how I'm going to get home.